Welcome to the channel where we provide a daily short video documenting the lives of some of the most interesting people in sport and culture. In today's video we give a glimpse into the fascinating life of football hooligan turned community activist Barrington Patterson, better known as One-Eyed Baz. Barrington's parents came to Britain for a better life in the 50s arriving in 1958 and they would have five kids together. Barrington would be born in August of 1965. They would move to Handsworth in Birmingham when Baz was still a young child. Before long his father received an eight-year sentence for his involvement in a stabbing leaving Barrington without a male role model at home. More tragedy would impact his life as he went on to lose his eye after his sister threw a drinkskin at him. This incident would play no small part in shaping his life. He would grow up on the rough Birmingham streets and by the time he was only 12 or 13 he was already making a name for himself. Barrington was part of a gang which targeted prostitutes punters for easy money and before long he would be suspended from school for robbing another student at knife point. He was also bullied for having just one eye. Other kids would taunt him calling him Cyclops, but he learned to defend himself fighting his way through senior school making a name for himself. As he became an older teenager he would venture out into the streets of Birmingham city center joining a violent multi-racial street gang known as the Handsworth Wanderers. Their turf would be the Birmingham Bullring. They would also control the areas around Birmingham New Street Station and the gang of around 50 youths would tax and steal whatever they could. He would graduate to run with the Birmingham Rude Boys, a violent street gang that were into ska music such as the specials. The Rude Boys would fight brutal pitch battles with skinheads and mods blood would flow on the streets of Birmingham. At just 18 he would start working the doors. He immediately started making contacts and perfecting the art of violence and intimidation. The Rude Boys in turn would form part of a larger gang called, the Townies, who were 20 to 30 strong. They ran the city of Birmingham having no fear and would rob anyone even the Birmingham City Football Hooligan Gang at the time. The firm fought back however but the battles between the firm and the Rude Boys would result in mutual respect with them eventually joining forces. By 1982 Barrington was in the terraces. At that time most hooligan firms were predominantly white but the Birmingham crew would be starkly multiracial with black white and Asian faces among their ranks. During a game with Manchester City in the 1982 season one of the Birmingham faces would shout Zulu and the name stuck. Since that time the Birmingham firm would be known as the Zulus. Baz would face racist threats from rival firms but this would only fuel his fury. The Zulus would move in numbers of between two and four hundred. They would storm trains jumping the barriers acting with complete impunity. Their very name would strike fear into the hearts of rival firms in the 1980s football with hooliganism being rife all across Britain. Firms would clash on a weekly basis in scenes that would resemble wars. Barrington Patterson would rise in the ranks to become one of the Zulu's key faces. Among their biggest rivals were the Millwall Bush Whackers and other feared firm from London. The firm would master the art of extreme violence and they would use everything from iron bars, baseball bats, knives and whatever else they could find. It got to the stage that the police were intimidated and would be hesitant to get between groups. As the violence spiralled it led to massive security reform in the British football game. But as the police started to revolve, so did the firms. When their rivals would visit their home turf in Birmingham the Zulus would become masters of the ambush and often visiting firms came under violent attacks. Throughout the 1980s Barrington would become known as One-Eyed Baz, his reputation would grow and he would become one of the most feared names on the British terraces. On a night out at Nottingham's Rock City nightclub he would meet Alison who would become his first wife and they would have a child. In 1987 he would move from Birmingham up the road to Coventry the same year that the Sky Blues would win the cup. He would start working the doors and his name would become one of the most feared in a crime-infested city that was among the most violent in Europe at the time. Baz would stand his grounds and he would make his name in blood. Baz found another interest and would start to compete in bodybuilding contests and from around 1986 and by the late 1980s he would start to take kickboxing and bodybuilding to another level. He built his physique into something to fear, openly using steroids to fuel his growth. He would win Mr. Birmingham in 1988 and Mr. East Anglia in Great Yarmouth in both 88 and 1989. Baz been a keen martial artist since his early childhood starting judo at 10 years old before moving on to karate in 1989. After moving to Coventry he would join the famous Dev Barrack kickboxing gym where he would find a home for his violent intent. He would stand out as a ruthless fighter in the ring and by his early 30s he would get into competitive MMA fighting. He ultimately moved away from the terraces and focus his energy in the ring and on his MMA career which would take off soon. 
Fighting across Europe his reputation grew as he knocked out more and more opponents. By the early 2000s he would command several thousand pounds per fight and he would fight in front of crowds of more than 20,000. He even in 1995 fought Vitaly Klitschko, ultimately losing the fight but standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the combat sports great for long periods of the bout. As his fighting skills increased so did his reputation around the country and he was known across the length and breadth of the UK as someone who was not to be messed with. When he wasn't fighting in the ring he would run his own security firm and he would manage some of Coventry's roughest doors. He had earned the respect of not only his door team, the footballing firms of the country but the whole city of Birmingham as well. Vaz mellowed with age and in the latter stages of his life he would help those in need and he was especially driven to help people off the streets. He was known to be a straight talker but also a figure who would always give someone in need a chance to turn their life around. He dedicated time, effort and money to try and help young people from making some of the same mistakes he made in his youth. Baz would also become a sensation in the media, he would feature in numerous books he would go on to release his own autobiography. He would also be featured in TV programs such as Danny Dyer's Deadliest Men and he would be interviewed by various podcasts including James English. Sadly on Tuesday the 22nd of March 2022 Baz started to feel pains in his chest and would go on to have a massive heart attack. Despite paramedics' efforts they were unable to save him. He was 56 years old. His funeral took place on the 20th of May 2022 and attracted thousands including various high-profile names including former heavyweight boxing world champion, Frank Bruno. Baz will be fondly remembered as a unifying figure who devoted his later life to help others in and around Birmingham. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe for a daily video on some of the most interesting people in sport and culture.